Hi, so this is a video um, about some of the science behind um, electrochemical DNA sensors. So at Zimmer Peacock, we like to make electrochemical um, biosensors as contract development and contract manufacturing. And we often do it on these kind of screen printed electrodes. So this is a screen printed um, gold electrode and this is a screen printed um, carbon electrode. So and the reason we like to do that is because you can make um, screen printed electrodes at volume. And when you get to volumes, um, they can also be quite low cost. And so my recommendation, and I'm just going to do this very quickly, is if you're thinking about making a um, DNA sensor, then there's probably um, a couple of sensors I would recommend. Um, if you go to screen printed electrodes, we've got the um, value electrodes, and we've got something called um, the carbon 303, and we've got the gold 303. It would be perfect if you could actually do it on what we call the hyper value um, electrodes um, and the reason being is that they're already very competitive um, in terms of price but let me come away from that now and talk about um, what i really want to talk about today which is the science of um, dna detection um, so first thing i want to touch upon is you know we're imagining that um, there's some organisms some virus and bacteria and you want to do the um, detection on this. And so you're going to have to um, extract the DNA from that organism. And what I'm going to say is I have, or we have another video on um, DNA detection. And in that video, we talk about um, PCR, polymerase chain reaction. We talk about building a DNA sensor, which is really answering the question, how do you take a carbon electrode and gold electrode and give it specificity towards the DNA that you're interested in? And um, also then having to do that DNA detection itself. So what I'm going to do is I am going to put a link in. If you're watching this on YouTube, I'll put some links to that video so you can watch that. Because that video has stimulated this video because it, the question that people asked was, um, if you're going to turn a screen printed electrode into a... DNA biosensor, then you're going to have to give it specificity. And in the case of DNA, you can give it specificity by making um, the complementary single-stranded DNA or um, oligonucleotides. So what I will do is I'm just going to um, go down slightly and warn you that there is a fair amount of chemistry in this. Um, so I'm not going to dwell on all these. Um, well, I, we're going to go through a cycle um, in a minute called um, the phosphoramide um, cycle. So I've just skipped through the kind of a few chemical structures quickly. But what we're going to talk about is what we're not going to talk about is what are you going to make? And so if you're making a DNA sensor, I would ask you to watch the other videos. Um, we take the single-stranded DNA, and this allows us to detect the complementary single-stranded DNA. So that's so. The first question is, what are you going to make? And that's really based on what do you want to detect. The next question is, how are you going to make it? So this video is really about how to make that single-stranded DNA. And um, the first thing to say is, it's actually can be quite fairly e well, I say fairly easy. There's two ways of going about this. You can actually either buy the equipment, and I did have a look um, on eBay this evening, and this kind of equipment um, is available on um, eBay. And then basically, it's a system where you have a reservoirs of the um, of the bases that you need. So sort of DNA is made up from cytosine, guanine, adenine, um, adenine, sorry, and thymine, and you have all these bases and you pump them and you go through um, these um, phosphoramidite um, synthesis cycle where you attach bases to bases to bases to bases and then you make yourself um, this short, short strand of DNA um, which is sort of that's so you can make these things um, and I'm going to describe next the cycle of it but I'm also going to finish the video by saying you don't need to make it. Actually, there are quite a few services around um, where you can design these um, the DNA that you want, and then um, other companies will make it for you. So first of all, let me describe this um, phosphoramidite um, 
oligonucleotide um, um, synthesis cycle. So the first thing is you start off with a um, a base, and it's um, here it's got what's called a protecting group on it. So you can um, you literally start off with the kind of almost the first um, base that you want, and you deprotect it. And when I say you deprotect it, if you've got one of those synthesizers, the deep there's a protocol for the deprotection. But um, and I'm sorry that there's all this chemistry in it, but the first thing that's going to happen is we deprotect it. So this group here becomes just a simple OH group. And then what you could do is you're going to couple. So that OH group, you couple it to a new base. So we bring in another base. Um, and it has a sort of phosphorus atom here, if you notice. And that phosphorus atom is activated with this nitrogen to react with this OH group here. And I realize that um, my pitch is slightly in the way, so I'll sort of move that out of the way and put it there. So this phosphorus here is activated to coupling this OH here. So we have a deprotection step. So um, here, this becomes a simple OH. And now that OH is ready to react with this phosphorus atom. And we basically um, conjugate these two, or covalently bond these two bases now are together. So rather than just one base and then a second base, we have them together. And um, so what's next is something called capping. And in capping, all you've, what you've done is you've actually oxidized this phosphorus atom. Um, so now it's got a double bond O to it. So here you had one, two, and three oxygens. So now you've got one, two, three, and four oxygens. And then you go, sorry, as I say, that's that's the modification. And then you go through the repeat cycle again. So it's basically a cycle um, of start off with one base, deprotect it, couple it, cap it, do it again, do it again, do it again. Every time you go around, you're just increasing the number of um, the length of the um, oligonucleotide or the length of this small um, single strand of DNA. And as I say, I know um, you can do that manually, um, but there also is equipment out there. And this equipment really is just pumps and valves um, and reagents, and it does it for you. And like I said, I'm not promoting eBay. I have no association with eBay, but you can even get this kind of kit on eBay. I had a look this evening. I saw something for about 15,000 US dollars. Um, and all this equipment is really doing is just running you through this um, phosphoramidite um, oligonucleotide synthesis cycle. So if you like chemistry, then you'll you'll like that slide. And then I want to say, really, you um, you don't need to do this. You have to um, you have to know what you want to make. And so if you're not sure what to make, you're probably best off um, partnering up with um, a molecular biologist. So that will help you answer, what do I need to make? But then the question of how do I make it? Well, you can make it through a, for example, a process called the phosphoramidite um, oligonucleotide synthesis cycle. And actually you can get equipment to do that. And all the equipment is doing is going through the cycle one step at a time and building up the length of DNA. Now I know that that kind of technology has been around for a good yeah, 40 years now. And there are more modern ways of doing it, but in the end, it's fairly it can be fairly straightforward. But I want to say is you don't need to do it. Um, what I would like you to do is just Google um, a search called Custom DNA um, Oligo Synthesis Services, and you'll actually find lots of people offering. As long as you know what you want to make, they will make it for you. And I was looking at the prices, and they charge you per base, and it's really not so expensive. Um, so in previous videos, I, we have talked about at Zimmer and Peacock, we, um, we manufacture screen printed electrodes and we manufacture these kind of small potential stats, um, that work, um, with those screen printed electrodes. But in order to turn a screen printed electrode into, for example, a DNA, um, detection, then you probably need to 
functionalized either the gold or the carbon electrode um, with a complementary stand of DNA so that you can capture and then uh, um, detect the DNA. I bring up this slide because at Zimmer Pigot we've quite unusual that um, we have um, electrochemistry in-house, we have chemistry in-house, and we also have uh, molecular biology in-house as well. So this cycle of designing um, the assays for uh, DNA detection is quite straightforward for us, but with this video I'm trying to kind of give you um, also an insight how you can do this potentially for yourselves. So I'll finish on just this note that um, in order to make a DNA um, sensor, you probably need a carbon electrode or gold electrode. The next thing you'll need to do is um, put on a single strand of DNA um, and you would have to design that single strand of DNA by knowing the target that you're interested in and then designing the complementary DNA for it. And then you have to immobilize that onto a carbon or gold electrode. Um, you can synthesize those. And um, I've had a look into the synthesis versus just paying for it as a service. And so my recommendation is I think you, it's economic just to pay for it as a service. Um, at Zimmer and Peacock, we do do contract development and contract manufacturing. We have a lot of standard products on our website regarding electrochemical biosensors. And really, if you have any questions, um, just reach out to us. OK, I hope that's useful. Um, if you make any comments, we're always pretty good at trying to reply to them. OK, thanks very much.